<laughs> we need some more beakers. Yeah. Mm, here. The world needs more beakers. Yeah, and colored fluids. Let me get down to the bottom of it all. You ever think about the stuff that you did in science class and you're like, why the hell was I allowed to do that? Like dissect an owl? You just an, an owl? owl? Dissected an owl. An actual or no, owl? No, I'm sorry. I'm owl sorry. pellet. Owl pellet. Owl pellet. <laughs> I'm like, it sounds damn, so much cooler to dissect an owl. I fetal pigs in eighth grade. Jeez. Wow. It was disgusting. <laughs> I didn't know that actually happened. I thought that I was only in movies. I don't know why it happened. Were you down or were you disgusted? I was both. totally down. <laughs> I mean, now I probably would have opted out of it because... I'm, I don't even know if there was an option. I can't remember. But I just, I liked, and I still do, like, gross stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but do you not <laughs> eat, it, do you not, like... Well, now I don't eat meat. The, yeah. So I probably would have been, like... Not so cool. I can just look at a picture. Yeah. I don't need to do this. <laughs> but in eighth grade, all I wanted to do was, like, take the fetal pig's kidneys out and throw them at the other kids, <laughs> which is exactly what happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course. And I feel like that paints the perfect right. picture of what you were like in yes. school. I was actually very well behaved. I think uh, it's just it was a great opportunity that was presented to me, and I'm sure everyone else was doing it. And yeah. I was 12, so I was like, well, you better fall in line. Right. Pick up a and check it, you know? Was this around the time when you were learning guitar, already shredding? Where were you at with guitar when you were throwing around pig? Pig kidneys? And, yeah. um, during my peak organ throwing period <laughs> I uh, I wasn't playing guitar I, I wasn't really interested in music that much I probably was listening to almost exclusively DMX mm-hmm. who's really yes. popular at mm-hmm. the time I still really <laughs> enjoy uh, musical stylings of for sure um, <laughs> my dad had a guitar I just I just wasn't into rock music it was like this like archaic music that like only like, old like Neanderthals listen to, <laughs> to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, and everyone in my school kind of like, we, you know, we all listen to like contempor- like Hot ninety seven or whatever. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, so, and I and I still had a very very strong desire to belong and be cool, which started fading away around that time. But uh, I wasn't really into rock and roll until I was like fourteen, which was probably my like freshman and sophomore year of, of high school. Yeah. Why did that start to fade away? I realized it wasn't going to happen for me. Like, <laughs> it wasn't you know, like, a hip hop yeah. kind of vibe, like that kind of no, I just, coolness like, or something. I wasn't going to fit in, you know, like it wasn't really meant for me. I, like when I tried to like wear the right clothes and have the kind of like cool temperament of the popular kids, it's just like it wasn't my style. Like I am yeah. a very anxious person who doesn't want to wear like stuff from limited too right <laughs> to bring it all back around and contempo like, yeah. as much as i like shoplifting from claire's like i don't really want it to be like a lifestyle choice yeah. or i didn't um so that was like 13 14 was the transition you're like yeah, i'm out on this yeah and then uh my the band that like uh got me into rock and roll who's had like tons of hits at the time and it was back when you know music videos were still on tv and stuff was terrible was time. garbage yeah. yeah. And and then when I found out about that band, which was like really accessible f- for a teenager, yeah. I learned about like uh Nirvana, which had, you know, been that band had been broken up for years at mm-hmm. that point and Kurt had been dead for years at that point. Mm-hmm. And so and then from there it just like kind of steamrolled into a bunch of like Pixies and yeah, like yeah. all the kill rock star stuff and so I feel like Garbage was the first one for me too. Yeah. What was that? No, um, mine was like Green Day. Yet? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. My dad, I, I did like Green, I feel like I liked Green Day. They were like light. They were like rock light or something. Yeah, I just remember my dad yeah. had the tape for Dookie. Yeah. yeah. And we were yeah. driving up to Maine for some like weird family thing and I was just sitting in the back seat like staring at the cover. Yeah. I could still probably, I feel like I could draw it from memory with the little monkey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And reading like all the lyrics and stuff. Yeah. But um, I kind of resented Green Day back then because we used to like always get to take turns in art class or gym class about, like, playing CDs for while we were doing those activities. Uh-huh, that's cool. And the boys always wanted Green Day. Yeah. And I remember I always wanted Salt and Pepper. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Aerosmith. I feel like those were the major albums. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Both. Um, Good for you. Yeah. And the no matter which boy it was in that era, it was always putting on Green Day. Yeah. Yeah. And Weezer... 
Yeah, yeah I, was, Weezer I was super into Weezer. Yeah. Yeah, one of the first albums I bought on my own. And one of the first, like, rock, like, one of the first music videos that was new that I remember seeing on TV was, like, for Hashpipe, which the Green Album is not really one that I look back on and yeah. totally love. But right. It was still kind of exciting to see, like... Totally. I don't remember the Hashpipe mm-hmm. video. Uh, they're, like, two sumo wrestlers. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Live. So that was... Yeah, Weezer was, like, one of the first big rock shows I got to go to that wasn't, like, in a VFW hall. Right. Like an emo band in a VFW <laughs> hall <laughs> yeah. in North Jersey. Yeah. I remember, like, going home and, like, watching music videos. Oh, like, yeah. Like, that was, like, 3 o'clock... Yeah. Right. Well, we had the Carson box. Daily TRL. Did you guys have the box? No. It, so I grew up in Elizabeth, which is like New Jersey, know, fifteen miles away from here. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And uh, the box was like a, a jukebox, but it was on the t- television, so you could call and pay like three fifty, and then you like punch in what video you want to see, and then you just sit and wait what? for it to so, come on. Like in inter- like pre internet. Internet. It was like right when like the internet was being introduced in everyone's home. Like my family didn't have a computer, but I would beg my dad to let me call the box so I, I never, could order like. Oh my god! Never. Heard I've of never that. heard of that either. That's yeah. amazing. And it was yeah. Some people had it. Some people didn't. Yeah. But like since it was a jukebox, like whatever was popular on at the, whatever was popular at the time was right. just what was in constant rotation. So like, I'll be missing you by Puff Daddy was just on yeah. all day. <laughs> And I would just watch it over and over again because I was yeah. like, fuck yeah. <laughs> but then you could <laughs> request something it. else. Yeah, but I yeah. wasn't ever allowed to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. My dad was like, hell no. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, go go go. I was going to say, how easy was it to then transition to a shredder? Yeah. Like, you discovered all this music, but like, you're such a killer guitar player. Like, yeah. how did that transition happen? Um... I really, well, so I, like I said, I, I, when I learned about, like, Nirvana and Pixies, and I was just listening to a lot of grunge in general, um, I got, like, super duper obsessed with Smashing Pumpkins. They were, like, my favorite band when I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. And so the early records have tons of sh- sh- just, whatever, shredding on them. Or <laughs> is that <laughs> word, like, yeah. is that? No, uh, is, who cares? Okay. Whatever. <laughs> thank, thank yeah, I, any word just is becomes over you. Yeah, it's like... It? Uh, no, not, yeah, it's it's really, not. It's like, like, is there another word? Not even? off the top. Like, of what's my the head. other <laughs> way we could just not just sound like everybody playing else? Playing the way you that play you do. Well, <laughs> you fat, fat, all the notes. Okay, okay all the notes. Touching them all, yeah. all over. Yeah. Um, so uh, I wanted, I wanted to play like that. I think that's like kind of a big part of where my s- guitar playing style comes from. But then I also really liked the Pixies, and I also really liked Radiohead, which actually has, like, a lot of lead guitar playing in it. But then when I got into punk, I was just trying to, like, I I guess became a lot more focused on, like, really liking songs and liking bands and not being so obsessed with being, like, a quote-unquote, like, apt or good musician. I, I realized that, like, that's not really what I, that's not really what I wanted. What I wanted was to, like, have like be a part of like a punk community mm. or like mm-hmm. a, a like-minded community or find people with the same like value system that I had um which was really hard to do because mm-hmm. yeah. I was 15. Yeah and well what was your concept of a value <laughs> yeah like what did that mean for you then? <laughs> well I mean when I started getting into like Chainsaw Records and, uh-huh. and Killer Rockstars you know as a young queer I was just like I I didn't really figure it out until I was probably a little bit older but I was just like I just needed to like find people who like weren't afraid to verbalize that because I was like so terrified of Mm -hmm. it but I was super obsessed with like Slater Kinney and Mm Bratmobile so I think it was like I was uh trying to like have like having some kind of like catharsis via like that music yeah um but I still, like, I couldn't put the pieces together in my brain until I was older. And uh-huh. I just wanted to hang out with other people who, I'm sure other people who were, like, queer, other women, and uh, people who liked rock music. And just, like, that didn't exist yeah. in, wh- like, where I was from. Or I'm sure it did, but I, what was right. I going to do? Put it up out in the village voice 14 <laughs> year old <seeks laughs> yeah other 
gay 14 right. year olds. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know what I would have done. So I just kind of like, uh, or, like walked around with my CD player with anti skip action. And yeah, yeah. Didn't talk to anybody. <laughs> with anti skip action. Yeah. 60 seconds anti skip yeah. action. I pointed out our DP mic because I walked in here today and asked him if he <clears throat> liked the Walkman. Uh-huh. And I meant the band. Yeah. And he was like, oh, like the Sony? Yeah. I, I love the Walkman. That's <laughs> yeah, great. I, I used like, to yeah, ride I my too, bike actually. with my CD player. I remember like going to Radio Shack and being like, "No skip," m- like yeah. minimum eighty second anti skip action. Yeah, I'm yeah, not, yeah. I'm not fucking paying for <laughs> it. Oh my god! <laughs> and they were like ninety bucks. Yeah, but I needed it because I get, and I had those headphones that, like wrapped around the back of your head. Yep, yeah. Oh, cool. pro, pro yeah, move. I just, like ride my huffy. Yeah. Right <laughs> um. No, I'm glad you decided some of those influences because last night my girlfriend asked me if if I was going to ask you if you were inspired by Riot Girl music. And I was like, I think it might come up. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, it, it was a huge part of my life once because I really wanted to be in a band and I knew I wasn't like a terrible guitar player, uh-huh. but I was really scared of playing with other people because they were almost always young boys and I was terrified of young boys yeah <laughs> I was terrified of ev- everybody <laughs> to right. be honest right um but young boys especially like yeah I'm and they, sure what to do they also them. wouldn't really give me the time of day which yeah. was I mean they didn't know me I was like a recluse yeah so I still feel shitty uh I guess so I asked if I could be in there there weren't a lot of bands in my school anyway yeah I remember I asked uh, the the new metal band in my school. If I could be in their band, you had a new metal band in your nice school. So That's that dope. They, yeah, they were called a. Uh, damn it. <laughs> I don't think uh, my high school. We certainly didn't have. No, I no. Say, like, my high school didn't have bands. No, so lame. Well, you just mean Everyone like groups of friends that were. Yeah. I saw them once, and they weren't bad. They played above a bowling alley in Roselle Park. Yeah. What the hell were they called? <laughs> I just you. remember Pig the, intestine throughout. No, it was like it was like. <laughs> It was like repulsion. It wasn't repulsion. That's like a grindcore band. But there, there was something mm. like that. But yeah. I remember the lead singer. He was very nice to me. And he, he actually, I think he might have felt bad because he asked me a couple of days later if I could design a tattoo for him. And it was a rat holding a guitar, smoking a blunt. Nice. <laughs> I made That's it awesome. for him. I, I hope he got it. I don't know if he did. And so you were a drawer also? Yeah, I like, to, I like to draw. That was why like everyone left me alone. Because they oh. were like... Marissa is really weird, but she can like draw my name in bubble letters if right. I need her to. <laughs> yeah. So she's not so she she's all right. So yeah. You're very much like the Ali Sheedy in the Breakfast yes, Club. Yes, good one. I get that a lot. Great yeah, one. I get that a lot. But then I didn't see the Breakfast Club until I was older. And, and then was, when you saw it, did it make sense? Or were you like, that's not me? Fuck I that. Mean, <laughs> I was like, sure. I think we all have a little of every Breakfast Club character. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> but it was mostly the pixie stick thing where I was like, I would never do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And what was it? Captain Crunch on a sandwich? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. It's like, I'm a, I was a very normal sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm curious how you found Riot Girl and like all these alternative bands that weren't being played on Hot 97 and on TRL. Like, what was your way in? It's a in? shame though. Don't, wouldn't it be cool if Funkmaster Flex was just like... <laughs> that would be wild. You just like threw in some XQ17. Yeah. Yeah. Like, to the... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Actually, today that would be totally normal. I feel. You think so? I don't know. It's all. Don't you feel like it's all just the mono kind of, genre? Yeah. yeah. It's just oh, one. It's just genre, one trap yeah. beat. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good beat though. Um, I. Uh, I'm sure it was some somehow via Nirvana, probably. Yeah. Like magazines, like. Oh. Uh, I used to read like Spin. Yeah. Um, and then. When I could get my hands on Punk Planet, I would look at that because they sold it at Barnes and Noble. So I would just sit there and read yeah. it. Because what are you going to do in New Jersey suburbs? Just yeah. Hang out at Barnes and Noble and read music magazines. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, my, I got a computer probably like freshman year of high school or something. And we had like a dial up modem, but Napster was like a yeah. big thing still. So, mm-hmm. um, and Kill Rock Stars had a, I don't remember like what got me on that page. Is, I I can't I can't recall. Oh, okay. I do know. <laughs> when I was in therapy as a fourteen year old, uh-huh. my therapist's daughter worked for Rolling Stone and made me a mixtape, and it was the best thing wow. ever. Whoa. But it had it had a Slater Kinney song on it, and then got my first computer and I looked them up. Wow. And Kill Rock Stars had like that sample page where you could download 
like one song from each band mm. so then i went through each band and it took like two hours to download yeah. each song. <laughs> and then i'd drive well when i could drive to vintage vinyl uh-huh. which is like this big old record store in, in jersey and just get everything yeah wow. i guess that would have been what like 99 90 no this was like early 2000s yeah, right, i was wow. in high school what was your relationship with your therapist that their <laughs> daughter was making a mixtape? I wish my great. therapist had I terrible think, yeah. boundaries <laughs> like that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> don't get me started. She was actually really awesome, and I think, like, she just was, like, she probably... I can't remember any of this stuff, but, like, yeah. in retrospect, I imagine teenage me sitting on the couch and not saying anything <laughs> except talk, wanting to talk about music. Uh, yeah. And she was probably just, like... I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with this kid. <laughs> and she was just like, I'm going to have my daughter make her a mixtape. Yeah. And you know what? It's like good. the best thing that ever happened to me. So yeah. she's, maybe Great she was therapist, like, a, she's a genius. Ther- yeah, genius. I don't know. I mean. That's amazing. I love her to this day. I don't know where she is or what she's doing, but. Yeah, it's like she's one of the people in your life that like <laughs> yeah. pushed it along. That's a good story. <laughs> is that, is yeah. that not good with boundary? Well, I mean, my therapist, I, she, she, she make could, you like, too? live on the moon. I have no idea what her life is. Really? She could have like ten kids. Like, the fact kids. that you knew that, right, I, <laughs> same, no with, kids, same or... with my experience. I have no idea. <laughs> I just feel like that's not a, but it's not, like, a big, that's not no, a No, it's not, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, no, like, I think it's a style. Not. Honestly, I wish that I could just know so I could I stop wondering about I it. Know, you just ask. Yeah. yeah, sometimes we're, like, in therapy, and I'm, like, kind of talking about myself, but I'm also, like, looking for a wedding ring, or I can't, like, I'm just wondering so many things about it. Totally. Oh, I always, I, like, grill them all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah. That's been my experience as well, Jesse. But I've have I, you ever asked? I haven't. Maybe we just. But need I know. To ask. I, yeah, I'm sure we could. <laughs> I wonder. Look if at us, like playing by the rules. To this podcast also. <laughs> I would love really research just be like, on me. We do. I wish they cared that much yeah. to do that. Huh? Just be like, what do you do? Like when yeah. you're in session, you know, and they're like, <laughs> later. So I'm sorry. This Wanna get a drink? Our, our time is up. Just be like, oh, cool. What are you up to today? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. When I walk in the room, sorry, we're digressing so much, but when I walk in the room, I will, will sometimes be like, how are you? And I feel like she gives me a look. Yes. Like, that's not a yes. question There to must ask be me. A, th- a therapy-like style like of teaching, that's like true. of, of yeah. learning that that's what you do. We don't go there. How are you? <laughs> I think that's an acceptable question to ask. Any- I feel like this is what I get. Fine. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Rough, dude. God, I hope she never watches this. I'll be nervous. <laughs> anyway. No, it'll just be more interesting. This um, is like an episode of Curb this season where Larry like tells someone about something that his therapist likes and then his therapist is like, you violated oh, yes, the, yes, the, the right. doctor-patient like confidentiality. Or like, and Larry's yeah. like, it doesn't go that way. Right. You can't talk about me. I can talk about you. Yeah. yeah. I've seen her in the supermarket. I mean, I remember seeing her in the supermarket a couple of times and being thrilled. Yeah. I was with my dad. <laughs> It's weird. You're like you're real. Yeah. You're a human. Yeah. Yeah. We're all living she the same. Some strawberries or something. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, when did you start writing songs? Um, I think I started pretty immediately. Okay. Um, because that's what I realized I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, was it journal diary style at first that turned into lyrics, well, thank, or was thank it? Thank God it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I had a live journal. A live uh, journal, like a blog. Yeah, I remember like, that was. I wow. Is that a different? Is I don't think I wrote thing? down feelings in it or anything though. I'd be like, today Mandy puked in class. It was funny. <laughs> Mood, <laughs> laughing. Like I don't know. Um, uh, I my dad when my dad would bring home like his work laptop, uh-huh. he'd let me use use it, and he had like one of these little weird computer mics you could like plug in and yeah. And uh, I uh, I had like this Yamaha keyboard where you could put the drum preset on and then each key was a different drum sound so uh-huh. I'd like, like play the drums be like doo, doo, da, doo, doo. yeah right so I'd play the drums and then like I'd just think of a song that I like and like try to emulate it and make my own and I, I recorded like you know like 40 songs and they all sound psychotic <laughs> um, it's just like I go through every genre in three minutes yeah but, but I had so many and then I finally decided to share them with my my friend in high school and I was I was really shy about it because I hadn't really sung in front of anybody. Mm-hmm. And she was like, "This isn't bad." And I was like, "Oh, cool, thanks." Good. Did you like <laughs> to sing for yourself? Like, were you like, "Yeah, that sounds amazing"? No, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I just I to yourself. 
thinking about it and being like, this isn't so bad. Like, you could probably show it to Allison and she would think it was okay. Uh, and I, I knew I could sing. Like, I knew I was singing on key and stuff. But, like, I was just afraid of doing it in front of like, people. Yeah, did you have any uh, opportunity to sing in public? Like, Yeah, I was in choir for a long time. Okay. You know, but that's different. Yeah, but at least you yeah. know that, like, I can project and sing and I sound a certain way. Like, you yeah. know the tone of your voice. Or did that develop? Like, did the timbre and tone of your voice, was that an evolution or was that, like, just this gift that you've had? Uh, I wouldn't really call it Sorry a gift. Sorry to call it that. <laughs> <laughs> Shredding <Yeah>. and <laughs> <laughs> these gifts. <laughs> I don't need to go to therapy anymore. <laughs> That's what we aim for here. I'm done. I'm yeah, success. Uh, I'm waiting to bring up the fact that you are called the 77th greatest guitar right, yeah. player of all time. <laughs> we could go there. It's okay. I have We're, a good rebuttal for that. Like, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> he would. I, uh, I was in choir for a long time. I knew I could sing on key, but uh, I, I think I've gotten a lot better at it even over the course of just being in Screaming Females. Like, when I hear our early records, I just sound like a total goofball. Um, and I, I was pretty afraid to sing in front of people when we first started playing, too, but I think we all looked at each other and were just like, who's going to do it? And I was like, I guess I'll do it. <laughs> um, Especially it was your writing. Like, it was your... Yeah. Uh, I mean, we all write the songs together, but oh, okay. not... I write the lyrics, so it was just kind of like, well, I guess I'll do it. And once I kind of, like, had, like, my friends behind me and we were playing punk shows, I was like, I did it. This is the thing yeah. I wanted to do. I made yeah. it. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Um, so that that was cool. Yeah. Was Was playing punk shows, was it with your bandmates now or did you have other people that you tried out with and then no uh me and mike and jared have always been screaming females and then if any of us ever had to leave or quit or die (laughs) or lose a limb yeah yeah or (laughs) have part of our brain removed Uh uh-huh uh you know we wouldn't be a band anymore so um and we and and, you know we write all the songs together and Mm -hmm couldn't really do any of this stuff without each other so it's a very it's very much like we're a package deal yeah yeah um so they they definitely gave me like uh the confidence i needed to be able to stand in front of a bunch of drunk people and (laughs) scream yeah (laughs) and not drunk people (laughs) uh okay so you guys sell a t-shirt i'm gonna read what this t-shirt says this is my way of asking you about the name of your band great t-shirt says (laughs) Siri, why is Screaming Females called Screaming Females if there is only one female in the band? And then it says, Screaming Females does not abide by your narrow sexual paradigm. Please expand your mind. It should have a gender paradigm. I guess it's still works. So how much of that is joking and how much of that is being super annoyed by people asking <laughs> about the name I'm of your so band? I'm so glad you just read that because <laughs> I was about to go there. Thank I you. guess, it, you know, at this point, at this point, I feel like it's almost 50-50, because I love to <laughs> laugh, and I love jokes. Uh-huh. Uh, and you have to be but annoyed. It is, it is, <laughs> I'm, and I'm not easily annoyed, but, uh-huh. like, it's such a weird question, because I feel like because our band name makes a reference to gender, people are just like... What, like, but why? There are two people who are like male right. presenting in your band. And like, I'm just so confused, <laughs> and it's just like you wouldn't ask. Um, I don't know what's a, what's another band like the Walkmen. Right. They're people. Yeah, they're not actual Walkmen. Right. <laughs> right. Why? And so, well, yes, but you do understand it on the other le- like on the other hand. That that name is so specific and yeah. so like forward about it that you would. It, th- but is it any more specific than like Smashing Pumpkins? That's pretty yeah. specific. Yeah, because there aren't they aren't <laughs> none because, of them are pumpkins. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like screaming females implies or a certain as pumpkins. Or <laughs> yeah, um like hey, be a, they could be or Maybe they are. I don't pumpkins. know. <laughs> right. they, they might be pumpkins. That's a great band name also. They might be pumpkins. Yeah. Um <laughs> <laughs> but there is a way that that <laughs> name does sort of imply a certain um, message or direct or 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 <clears throat> just that there would be more than one screaming female. I'm trying to think of well, other bands that have like a like a split that are and there and there that there's a split in their name. But all I can think of is that band, the Men, which is <laughs> not. 
Um, I don't know. Yeah, well, oh, okay, how about this? So when, how did the name come about with, with the three of you? We just, we had a show in New Brunswick at our friend's house, and we didn't have a band name yet. And there was, like, a book of poetry at Jared's house that one of his roommates had. And we just opened it, and we were, like, writing down. We would just, like, open each page and, like, write down whatever words we saw. And then we're like, that's good. <laughs> I don't know. That, that was it? Yeah, it's That's like awesome. the most boring story I mean, I ever. Think, <laughs> I think what why it's interesting is like it's fantastic that it works that way, but the but our society, our culture, the way we think won't doesn't allow us to just be like, Oh yeah, that's normal or yeah. or makes perfect sense. And I mean the fact that, that your two bandmates, Mike and Jarrett, were like cool. Like not like, <laughs> wait a second, hold on. What does that mean about you as a leader? What does that mean about us as equal <laughs> members? What does that mean? I don't want people to think that I'm a screaming female <laughs> that's right me putting words in there right 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 yeah. right, yeah. Never, oh, right, yes. right 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 exactly right <laughs> yeah. like but uh, 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 yes what does it mean about the tenor of your band but also about the dynamic of the three of you mm-hmm. that puts you as clearly as like it w- f- outwardly facing yeah. you as a leader um mm-hmm. was there that sort of negotiation at any point or were, are they just like the two coolest like most open sort of uh well yeah i mean <laughs> I don't, we never really had a discussion about it i think we were just kind of like at the end of the day like this is just gonna be a pairing of words that represents like our our group and i mean there are a, it it was the it just seemed to like roll off your tongue easily there was an interesting kind of like very storied and visual that you could, like, d- d- you could yeah. kind of interpret in a in a myriad of ways. Um, but really, we just needed a band name so we could put it on the flyer for the show. And I wish I had a more sophisticated answer for you, but that's like that's all that happened. And we yeah. were also like, I was like nineteen, and then Mike was like seven. <laughs> Mike was still in high school, and we just like needed to play the yeah. show. Right. And I wonder <laughs> if now more than ever people are wanting to interpret it. I mean probably oh, always yeah, forever, I mean, I'm sure in your yeah, entire yeah, history, yeah. but but um especially now we're like what does it mean that you're that, you know? <laughs> and what is gender? What is gender? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean either way people are going to fixate on the gender composition of your band yeah. and you know the fact that you're an amazing guitarist is probably confounding to a lot of people who encounter your band and it's something that people would be trying to like figure, figure out. out anyway yeah. Yeah. Like yeah it's you know it's part of the great unknown i guess yeah it's just like there is <laughs> there is no reason it's like why are we here right i don't know no, like, totally. which is the it best is what it is I, yeah yeah um so yeah that's that's the genesis story yeah sorry it's so boring no <laughs> <laughs> um Dara, you had a question about producers they worked with oh right? yes well i wanted to first ask about working with steve albini and if you could speak to any of the uh, a specific type of sort of magic or something that he brought to your album Ugly? Was it Ugly? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and then I also just was curious about your choice of producers and, and if the idea of working with females, especially in on the production side or, you know, engineers and producers, if that means anything to you more so now, same as ever, if you have evolving feelings about that in general. but. Um. The only producer we've ever actually worked with is Matt Bayless, and he did Rose Mountain and, and our the next arc that's going to come out all mm-hmm. at once. Steve tip, Steve Albini typically doesn't um, quote unquote like produce anything. So like if you're sitting in the control room and you have second thoughts about like a bridge, you could ask him and he'll tell you. But he's not gonna like he's not gonna be like, hey, I think like this verse oh. could use like you should play a seventh instead of mm-hmm. like the, whatever. Um, He's an engineer, so, like, if you're... The things that, um, what I've learned seem to really matter to Steve is, like, uh, he's not going to, like, kind of waste his time recording your band if you don't... If you aren't, like, dedicated and really care about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If you're just coming in to make some kind of, like, weird vanity project or you are, like, listless and just need something to do with your time and you Mm -hmm. are just like, I have a bunch of, like extra money let me go make a record with steve albini he's just gonna be like get out of my face like (laughs) he wants to make records with bands that care about like their their craft and like you know dedicate their life to it or whatever Uh um so i must have some sort of unusual skill at at 
turning the dials and doing he, the things that engineers do. <laughs> I mean, he's an, incre- me, he's an incredible <laughs> engineer. Like, he can do stuff with the tape machine yeah. that I didn't even know humans could do. <laughs> um, and he's also just, like, his work ethic is really cool. Like, he he's not looking um, to, like, create some kind of... I mean, he already has, like, an amazing CV, which, like, made some of the best records ever. But yeah. he's basically just trying to, like... To, to work every day yeah. and do what he likes to do. Um, and maybe the band's not his cup of tea, but they really uh, care about their music and the album that they're going to make, and so he'll he'll make it sound good for them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I I had the wonderful luck of actually, like, becoming his friend, so I talk to him every once in a while, and he's just, like, a sweet pea. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> he also is an incredible cook. Yeah. Oh, Holy that's a crap. bonus. Wow. It's good quality. To yeah. Have oh, my God. Does that happen in the studio sometimes? Um, the he made us pasta once. It was really good. But one time we went to his house and he made, like, this crazy breakfast. It was, like, the best flavors I've ever oh, yes. eaten. He's he's, he's, he's a killing. wizard of all sorts. Truly, he is. <laughs> so, yeah, but Matt is an engineer and a producer. So, like, okay. when we made Rose Mountain and the new record, we'd send he, – he's in Seattle. So we would have to send demos back and forth. And then he would, like, send suggestions and notes. We'd demo him again and then uh, finally, like, kind of come to some conclusion with the song. So he'll he'll offer his two cents. Um, and I, I wish we could have the opportunity to work with a, a female engineer or a producer. But uh, Jared and I were actually trying to find some working female engineers or, or producers, and you know, on the Internet, which... We're not really part of the engineering world, so yeah, yeah. I, I think we found that there just weren't many who seemed to be doing the damn thing. But we're probably wrong. We probably just didn't find the right like side of the internet. But <clears throat> no, I mean, I I face this. We're always trying to find women DPs to work with, cinematographers, and they're definitely out there. Yeah. But I mean, it's just it's not fifty fifty yet mm, no. by any means. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so you just have to look extra hard and and because it, it's not just a matter of finding someone who's capable but you have to find the right person that you jive with right. who gets your right. vision or your sound or whatever it is well, you can't you know, just say you're a woman exactly right. <laughs> yeah. you have to say That's you're a woman for me deal. right <laughs> yeah <laughs> but in general are you feeling different feelings about these things in the past month six months about. or uh, just about gender equality <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, we certainly have a, a long way to go. And I mean, uh, for for the most part, you know, when I play a show, because I've had the wonderful luck of being in the band that I'm in, there are usually other women who are also playing. Yeah. Um, but m- when I'm making records, I'm usually the only woman there. Mm-hmm. Wait, why do you say that because of the band you play in, there's usually other women? Because uh, my my band is a female fronted act. We're associated with other female fronted mm-hmm. acts, and so if yeah. we're gonna and all, most of our friends' bands have female identified people in their bands too. Mm-hmm. So it's like, does that bug you to be lumped in in that way? Or no, no, no. I yeah. mean, when I was 14 and listening to all the Kill Rockstar stuff, like I wanted to listen to. Uh, a, a woman's voice singing, yeah, because uh-huh. that's what like resonated with me, yeah. Um, and so if if my band can do that for other y- y- young young women, then that's great. Uh, and the bills normally like match up. It's like, oh yes, it makes sense that we not just because we're women, but because our music makes sense together. Yeah, like that's I think where it gets I'm not tricky. It's that's, like it's all the time, but right. like a lot. Sure. Of and then even like be having the the wonderful luck of like starting out as a band in New Brunswick, since there were so few people playing music, um, it just wasn't really like a point of discussion if there were other women playing. Everyone was just stoked that there was a show (laughs) and there was something going on. And so like a lot of the female musicians I really look up to who like changed my life were ladies who were playing in bands in New Brunswick. Mm. Um, So I I was spoiled. I really didn't realize it until we started traveling a lot in the very beginning in every yeah. show was I was just like the only girl there. Yeah. But now it, it's it's definitely improved uh, from where I'm sitting. But I, I, I know I'm very aware that we right. have a long way to go. Yeah. <laughs> so are you guys going on tour for the new album? 
Yeah, we're going on um, we're going on a spring tour. The first leg of, of it is with a Philly band called Radiator Hospital. Okay. And then the second leg of it is with a, a doom metal band from Baton Rouge called Thou. Okay. okay. And a grindcore band from Philly called Hears, uh-huh. H-I-R-S, um, which we're super stoked about. We've been trying to kind of put that tour together for a long time, so we're, we're excited that that's happening. Um, and, yeah, I mean, we always try and bring our buddies on tour, and these are all people we've known for, like, you know, up to 10 years. Yeah, oh, that's so, awesome. Um, you guys put on a fucking show. Thank you. Like, <laughs> how how is touring? Is it? Are you? Do you have to save your energy somehow and sort of like not get drained and and just like preserve all of that, or are you able to like party and? Because it is wild. I've never been like. How do you like I, touring? I I have partied. Before. <laughs> I I you sleep a lot. And party. <laughs> Maybe that's why I sleep a lot. I don't know. Yeah. I'm a sleepy lady. I uh, take a lot of naps. Um, we're it's very, a lot. we're very mild mannered. Yeah. Yeah. Group of people. Um, we enjoy, you know, just all of the things that mild mannered people enjoy. Like <laughs> we like to read and listen to podcasts, and we have conversations about like album sequencing and Marvel at like a really nice tree or foliage <laughs> representing. <laughs> like if the right. foliage is really nice, we'll be like, wow. The foliage is nice today. If we see a good sunset, like we'll talk about it. Like we a real peaceful, like a juxtaposition is is <laughs> yeah. wonderful. Yeah. You know, yeah. and like we like having like a nice a nice IPA. You have a knockback <laughs> one or love two. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, so just, and then you rage just, on stage. and then you just, I just like can't Get imagine that. Stage. Yeah, that adrenaline. Yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing. <laughs> we never, we are very calm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It is. Otherwise, good. you'd burn out. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. So the album is out on February twenty third. All, All at, at once. once, which is what I feel like the world is. These days. Yep. So um, it seems like a perfect. I thought I had title. my. I have one of those like, like air horn apps on my phone. And I'm, oh. I don't know. <laughs> <It's a promo. laughs> you can add it in post. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, awesome. Thanks, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Of course.